I think the Gravelord in Covenant is most people's favourite. It's definitely one of the top ones for me from all the Souls games. There's so much variety. We have Gravelord servants who try and get really sneaky, using the map to their advantage and staying out of reach from the invaders. We have Gravelord servants who take this a step further and literally farm invaders through the Covenant by exploiting the spawn locations and using unique enemies which burn all players to death, for example. You have people trying out this Covenant for the first time and not really having a clue what they just got themselves into. This is not a Covenant for the faint-hearted. It takes a lot of skill and planning to be successful. There's just so many different ways to be a dark servant of Gravelord Nito. So many things you can do. So let's begin at number 10. Rox the Populous is leaving his Gravelord sign down in the Ulusil Township. Quite a risky spot since it's a busy area, although I don't think he's using the Dried Fingers item, so the Black Phantom Invaders should cap out at 3. Initially, it seems like the two invaders will fight one at a time, and he seems quite favoured for that with the huge defence he gets with the Havel's Armour and a Chaos Zweihander. It's not a particularly aggressive build, but it's pretty tanky and he can outtrade his opponents. However, a third Black Phantom finds his sign and invades his world. It was bound to happen, let's be honest. And this is when their natural instincts take over. He has a lot of poise and Estus, but that won't hold up for long. Plus, he's got a medium roll speed, which is terrible for escaping. So, if the previous submission was an example of bravely taking on the horde of black phantoms in plain sight, this submission highlights the opposite strategy of stealth. You all should know there's a secret bonfire before the Darkroot Forest, hidden behind an illusory wall. However, what you might not know is that it's possible to walk very carefully around the cliff edge to use the bonfire without dispelling the wall, which is what this genius Gravelord servant has done here. He has invading black phantoms all over his world right now searching for him. I'm sure they all run towards the bonfire as their first point of interest, but seeing the intact illusory wall, they would just assume the host hasn't come this way yet, so they'd move on. Eventually, one curious phantom breaks the wall and enters for a whole second. Killer Potato is using the Ring of Fog and wearing the Shadow Set to blend into the scenery. Clearly this is quite effective, more effective than it looks, since two black phantoms suicide in frustration moments after the bonfire is revealed. Finally, one of them enters again, and the truth is revealed. It turns out to be quite difficult to defend yourself against an enemy you can't see very well. So Killer Potato defeats the first few people to ever find him in his hiding spot. What a great idea, such a sneaky way to farm some Eyes of Death. Back in Ulusil Township, Fraser is an active Gravelord servant, but he's got Black Phantoms invading as well as standard Red Invaders, which can happen. Now these two groups can attack each other, so this has the potential to get very chaotic as Fraser runs over to the nearby elevator. This is always a good choice if you're outnumbered. If you're experienced with the Souls games, you'll know that elevators are terrifying entities with minds of their own. They show no mercy. The laws of physics and space do not exist here. There we go, the lift has claimed its first victim. Every time he reaches the top, one of the red phantoms is trying to hit him with a great bow but appears to shoot his teammate accidentally. Right now, it's like a Charlie Chaplin or Buster Keaton sketch. Eventually, we have the Phantom with Pyromancy stepping on for the ride. And that is two down. And that's three down, I guess. It's very common for other players to turn invisible when the elevator is in motion, which is why we have the host frantically kicking in every direction, trying to boot off the hitchhiker. 
Another fun fact about elevators, it's not possible to perform a backstab on them, which is why the huge rotating elevator in Anor Londo is a popular dueling spot. Whoa, no idea how two of them fit on that ride down, but the big one's gone. That is four phantoms devoured by the elevator, and now the host finally joins them. Elevators in Dark Souls are basically Sarlacc pits from Star Wars. Malkavian has experienced the almighty suck, suck through the painting into the painted world of Ariamis, which is an optional area that you can't leave until you complete it. Pretty cool. This little pile of corpses on a stake is actually Malkavian, the Gravelord servant. You can tell by the subtle black smoke effects giving him away. Still, it looks like these invading black phantoms haven't noticed him, so his disguise is serving him well. That was a spicy double kill with the Fire Tempest. One of the players actually ran into a Flame Pillar, which was an interesting choice, but he's clearly got a nice Pyromancy setup, so his spells hit hard. And he mops up the last Sorcerer as well with a sneaky Black Flame casting. This strategy works well in other areas too. In the upper rooftop levels of the Painted World, he's laid down some tempting Prism Stones. It seems his Chameleon Sorcery hides him so well that every time he bursts out to cast his Fire Tempest, his opponents are so caught off guard, they don't even think about trying to interrupt him. Aster Truefire is at number 6 with some undead parish shenanigans. First up, I had no idea this ledge was able to be jumped on. But we like to learn things here guys, leave a like for learning. So he kills the first Black Phantom to invade him, with a Gravelord Sword no less. This is the sword you get for joining the Gravelord Covenant, and is the only weapon in the game to inflict Toxin, aside from the Dark Silver Traitor. It's got a high base damage, so it's actually quite a popular choice for early low level builds, and it's proving very effective against his current challenges. It's also important to notice he got invaded by someone called Shrek420. This will become clear in a moment. He picks off yet another Black Phantom, two more reside within the church, and they seem to not be trusting the Red Invader, because remember, these two groups can attack each other. It gets a bit chaotic as he backstabs one while the other battles the Red Phantom, and that's where things go very badly. I think only PC players know the true pain of being invaded by a hacker inflicting instant curses and egg parasite infections. Truly a soul's speciality. Shame too, because he was on a really impressive kill streak. Luckily he got an egg vermifuge as a rare drop from tree lizards, so all's well that ends well. Danmaster007 has a little tutorial for us. He's found something very, very interesting that to my knowledge still works an exploit that hasn't been patched. So, in the vanilla version of Dark Souls, there was a 4 player max for multiplayer. Now, in the remaster, you can have 6 players in one world, which means when Gravelording, you can have almost twice the number of invaders, which is usually a death sentence. Once you use an Eye of Death and you're in Gravelord mode, you can't do anything else. You can't summon white signs to help or anything like that. Those options become locked. But this guy's figured out the secrets. First of all, summon your white summons before you Gravelord. Then the exploit we're going to be using is basically action queuing, when you force an impossible action to be queued up and then executed. So with this version, you try to use the Eye of Death while performing the Shrug Gesture animation. You switch to an item that is possible to use while toggling your weapon and then drop off a ledge. Once you land, you then successfully use the valid item, in this case the Silver Pendant, and then boom, you've queued up the Eye of Death input and forced it to activate. So he's now an active Gravelord servant with summons. This ends up really turning the tables, as you can imagine. Or is it just evening the scales? Now, the endless horde of invading black phantoms are met by an equally dangerous force of white summons led by their Gravelord host. His friendly white summons will not get extra Estus when a black phantom dies, unlike himself as the host. Also, once his white summons die, it would not be possible for him to resummon them. You saw he had to summon them before he tricked the game into becoming an active Gravelord servant. It wouldn't work afterwards. 
They do end up performing very well against the incoming flood of phantoms, but I would put this down more to their opponent's surprise and shock. Obviously this would make no sense to them, since it shouldn't be possible. I think if this was possible from the start, it might actually make this covenant a bit more balanced. It would be more like a horde mode, where the host and his one-time use summons use their resources as carefully as possible before they run out of healing. It's an interesting insight into how different the Gravelord Covenant could have worked. Fruity Tuesdays is doing something I have a lot of respect for. He's Gravelording in the Darkroot Forest. What a madman. The forest is notorious and crazy enough as it is. It's known for being a huge melting pot of all the different covenants, and he's sticking down a Gravelord sign in the center of all that. If you take too long to kill the first invader, many more will be showing up and they'll quickly overwhelm you. So it's one of the best covenants to test how good you are under pressure and how quickly you can rack up your kills. Hornet ring backstabs are of course pretty much essential here as one of the best attacks in the game. And also remember that red invaders need to be wary of the black phantoms because not all players choose to work towards a common goal. Cheeky reverse roll there, extra star points. The Red Invader with the Demon Spear is being pretty smart and very defensive, but you can see the Black Phantoms are piling up in the meantime, so he switches his attention back to some of them. Backstabs one, and parries another, just to thin them out a bit. Finally takes the Red Invader out, he put up the biggest fight so far, and it seems he's made a friend with one of the Black Phantoms, which is good for him. But already two more have entered the world looking for a good time. I really like the buff that that guy's using by the way, great choice, great choice. One of them is using double shields, can we just point that out, including the crystal ring shield which I have so much respect for, but it's suddenly looking a bit intense. Luckily a lot of these players don't have that much health, so a well timed backstab works wonders, but even so, another player instantly takes his place and that red invader with a demon spear returns looking for revenge. His six player kill streak finally comes to an end. Not a bad run at all, but you couldn't hold back the Black Phantoms forever. Next up at number three is where the submissions start getting crazy. We have Lacanus with an absolutely amazing submission. This one blew my mind. You'll see exactly why after five individual Black Phantoms invade his world while he stands in front of his bonfire. The fact that five separate people didn't notice him like this is stunning. He's wearing the full Stone Knight set to blend into the mossy stone walls in this area, and it works. Eventually, one Black Phantom starts clearing out the bushes in front of him. Probably just to make sure he wasn't disguised as a bush in chameleon form, to be honest. But either way, Lacanus wants a kill, and this player separated from the pack. After that fight, he really steps it up a level. No weapon, no shield, just his torso hiding in plain sight. This must have been really exhilarating to find out whether you'd get away with it. The invasion train hasn't slowed down, although it, it might have hit a speed bump apparently. That guy invaded and then somehow immediately fell off something and died. Incredible stuff happening. Here comes an earlier player wandering around who then runs back following another invader just as more spirits join the party. I reckon Lacanus is feeling pretty proud of himself right about now. He gets so bold at this point that he runs down the cliff edge to hide an item, but ends up getting caught by one of the new arrivals, which is pretty awkward. A brief fight with a fair amount of lag, but he decisively wins without alerting the rest of the Black Phantoms currently running around his world. Looks like his item gets found shortly afterwards. I feel like a nature documentary channel right now. At this point, it really is getting beyond a joke. It's been more than 15 minutes and he's left an item right there. He literally shrugs and still isn't found. Okay, finally, this might be it. Okay, no, I'm done. I'm so done. I've never had this happen in the past, but I, I actually can't watch the submission anymore. If you want to see the full thing, you can go to the channel links in the description, but I have to move on. This is inconceivable. I've never seen anything like this before, and it hurts my brain.
We have Hasaru grave loading in the undead bird and four separate black phantoms invade at once and everything happens so fast so I'll just pick out the key plays. Switching to a lightning rapier for a fast pivot backstab and then iframes through the sorcery castings. Wrath of the Gods to create space and push everyone back into a super fast parry into backstab combo. He misses the backstab this time but turns his swing so it at least hits one of the players. Super fast pivot backstab with the rapier as another player rushes at him and that's a killing blow. Followed up again with the Wrath of the Gods AoE as the remaining three bunch together around him. Places his vulnerable back against the corner so his healing can't be interrupted. And another backstab on a player who's rushing too aggressively. The long spear plus sorcery castings are very dangerous so he needs to take up the caster. Parries the guy with the demon spear so hard he poops out an item. And that's a demon spear player down. Left his back too exposed while healing. One final phantom remains with the gold tracer. Backstab into a slow R1 to catch him on the wake up. Swaps out his Gravelord sword to a lightning S-Doc. Takes advantage of a failed backstab where they both hit each other so the damage is cancelled out to heal. Predicts the wake up roll direction and follows up with a successful critical for the win. That is four players down in just over a minute. Definitely a skilled player there who kept calm under extreme pressure, very good reactions as well as great positioning. Number one. Oh boy, oh boy, it's Comrie and he's smashed it again. These clips he sent are outrageous and one of them I guarantee you'll have never seen before. The first clip involves the full five Black Phantom attack squad. He is in the Undead Bird at low level, but he's actually gone through New Game Plus, so he's got a lot of end game gear. Now, weapon matchmaking is good at making sure you're matched with opponents of a similar power level, but there's no matchmaking for armor and spells. Five Spirits of Vengeance blown to pieces by a single cast of Wrath of the Gods, which was boosted by Dusk Crown, Ring of the Sun's Firstborn, and the power within Pyromancy. It doesn't end there. You're getting your money's worth tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Even if this is free, whatever, still counts. Deep in the Ulusil Township, bottom of the dreaded elevator. What on earth is going to happen this time? What the heck just happened? You know what, I'm never taking this elevator ever again. I'm just gonna use the stairs. A different area of the Undead Parish, Comrade is being chased down the streets by four spirits of vengeance, but they better be careful if you ask me. He's in his full giant dad setup with the obsidian greatsword and power within pyromancy for extra damage. Giant Dad, Grave Lord, Ladder, Triple Kill, and an extra slap for the fourth guy at the bottom. That was eyegasmic. And finally, save the best till last, the greatest clip I've been sent for the Dark Souls remaster. Comrade clearly wanted to win this week, and he's absolutely done it. Watch this and be amazed. was a quadruple kill on three black phantoms and a red invader using the hellkite drake's almighty footstomp let it be known everyone comrade owns a dragon the real khaleesi has arrived thank you for watching everyone while you rate the video with a like or dislike i'll tell you that the topic for the next episode opens up to all three dark souls games again that's one two and three all versions all consoles with the topic of top 10 pvp moments so this time is much more general. Anything exciting slash interesting or unique moments that you have in a Souls game. Also, you should now see a title card to my last video on Immortal Unchained. Like I mentioned at the start, if you could check it out just for a few minutes even, I would appreciate that so much. Thanks once again to everyone who sent their footage and watched this video, and I'll see you in the next one.